show. We have Rabbi Manish Friedman with us today. Um, the Jewish Woman Influencers is grateful to Rabbi Friedman for guiding us from the beginning um, and keeping, staying with us along the process. Our goals are chinuch, marriage, parenting, and today we're talking about teens, parenting our teens. Thank you, Rabbi Friedman. You had some questions. Yes. So the first question we had was, what can we do when the kids are young to prevent chinuch problems in the teenage years? More questions? Yeah. Uh, the mother's role in chinuch. How do teens today differ in their strengths and in their challenges from previous years? And how can we protect our teens from the dangers of technology? Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with the punchline that is a little uh, maybe controversial or shocking, and then see what we can do with it. Technology is not a threat at all. Let's try to rearrange our thinking along that line. There's absolutely nothing wrong with technology. It's not a threat. It's not a problem. A lot of good things you can do with technology. So what's the problem? It can also be a bad influence. Yeah, well, so can your, f so can their friends. Even even the school can be a bad influence. I mean, every, we can't live like this, trying to protect ourselves from life. We're supposed to take control of life. So you can't you can't become defensive, and and try to protect children. Uh, by by uh, denying or uh, insulating or isolating, you can't do that at all, at all. So we have to think technology is great. And that's the message we have to give kids. Technology is fantastic. You know what's going on with the, with the learning that's going on online? And the message reaching people you would never be able to reach before, it's fantastic. You have a Yetzirah? Okay, that's a different subject. We've always had a Yetzirah. So the Yetzirah can make, of course, yeah, we know that. We don't live our lives devoted to avoiding Yetzirah. There's such a negative picture of, of reality. Your entire life is to avoid the eight sides. Not good. And it won't work. Can't work. So our message, which is certainly the Rebbe's message, positive inspiration all the time, in everything, we are not here fighting the world. We don't give power or, or significance to negative things, to bad things, to painful things. They exist. We've always de dealt with it. It's, it's annoying. It's distracting. But what's exciting? Only the positive. So if parents are, you know, you can ask most teenagers and they'll tell you, the only time their parents get animated is when something bad is happening. That sends a very negative message. Parents don't get so intense about good things, they only get really intense about bad things. So you think you're discouraging the bad? No, you're encouraging. You're showing that that's where life is. That's where passion is. That's where excitement is. That's where drama is. <clears throat> the exact opposite message of what you intended to send. So we have no, we have no threats or enemies. We have only potential for goodness and that's everywhere and always 
that's a major shift in our own heads. We have to stop panicking over the bad and get much more excited about the good. Well, can I ask a question? So, but we do see that when a kid gets a phone, it affects him very adversely. Like, you can, you're looking at your students in class and they're not there. They're, they're thinking about what they were watching last night at 4 a.m. It's just, it's, they're not there, so... So your influence can and must be more powerful. Yes, that has a powerful effect. And you can't have that effect? Okay, then we lost the war. You might as well co- skip this conversation and just let them do what they want. Because we can't compete. So you think that by taking away the phones and by making making bans and and they sue them and no, you're making it worse. So either you believe, really believe, that goodness, positive things, holiness, kedusha, is much more real and much more powerful, or you're saying we can't compete. We give up. So are there any restrictions that you have to put in place? I mean, I don't know if you can talk about the exact technicalities of it now, but... you got to get your kids to put restrictions. So why not have a really good conversation about how funny it is that people are so glued to their telephones you can't talk to them? Until the kid understands it and doesn't want it. I mean, either we believe in Chinuch or we don't. I and mean, we're here talking about Chinuch. Assuming that we do have some influence, right? So, if we really have influence, and if education is a real thing, and if Chinuch is really uh, effective, and, and then, then let's do it. But if you start panicking about, about the negativity, you, you've, you've lost all authority. We have to assume the teenagers are very smart, and they are. They're very idealistic, and they are. And they really want better. To simply tell them, you can't have this, you can't have that. So what? what, what's exciting about that? You have to come with an assumption, which is what the Rebbe kept telling us over and over and over. The assumption is everyone wants to do good. Just give them the opportunity, show them how, and they will. What about the fact that everybody wants to do bad? Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Particularly teenagers. Why do teenagers want independence? It's true. They very much want independence. Independent to do what? So we immediately assume they want independence to do what you're not allowed to do. No, no, no. To do bad. So if you give them independence, it's exactly what's going to happen. Everything bad, everything negative in the book, they're going to... They don't. They want independence because they feel like they need to accomplish something and that they're capable of accomplishing something. So that needs to be encouraged, not discouraged or or feared. You can't be afraid of their independence. So, number one, you can't be afraid of the bad in the world and you can't be afraid of their independence. No fears. Don't live your life with fears. So rather than wait until the teenager is demanding independence, we should get ahead of them and start pushing independence on them by expecting them to do great things. 
They need to be challenged. That is the answer to all of it. They're not challenged. We're trying to protect them. That's wrong. They don't want to be protected. They want to be challenged. And they tell you this every day. You're trying to protect them, and, they're, and they don't want. So what do they want? They want to be challenged. They want to be able to feel like they make a difference, that they matter in the bigger picture, not just to their mother. And, and they should. That is a very good thing. So you're saying they have to actively look for ways that they can be needed, um, and then they won't want the technology so much. They use basically. the technology for a good thing. Yes, which is amazing because it really can do amazing things. So, so you, what well, that was idea? Uh, we have to move it down, younger and younger, and just keep challenging them at home, at school, in the streets. They're far more idealistic than we are. They have more energy than we have, and they can do amazing things. What can we do to prevent? When we defeat for young kids, so that they don't get into trouble in the first place. So here, here's another huge principle in, in the world today. If you if you want to put it in uh, in terms of, of Mashiach. What's going to happen when Mashiach comes? There'll be no suffering. There'll be no. There'll be no threats. Mashiach is here. The world is good. You wake up in the morning. What? A major change that Mashiach brings is that there's no fear. There's nothing to be afraid of. Including death itself. Mashiach comes, we're not going to be afraid to die. What is that going to do to us? How are we going to handle that? If you think about it, since Adam and Chava ate from the Eitz Hadas, the only reliable motivation for anything in the world is a threat of death. It always boils down to that. Live life, make money, everything. everything. Eat breakfast. (laughs) Tomorrow you'll be here. (laughs) So you have to go to school. Why? Eventually... Because you're going to die. <laughs> if you add a little, um, a little thought about afterlife, the, de- the threat becomes even worse. You'll die, and then you'll really suffer. Not like you'll die and be okay. So, if you tell your child, You have to make a bracha on a cookie. You can't eat that. It's not kosher. Listen to the language. You have to. You can't. It's not true. I know this is is really radical. I can't. I have to. I can, and I don't have to. I mean, really, just think about the words themselves. You have to make a bracha. 
What do you mean I have to? You need to get good grades in school. You need to study. You need. I I need. Why you first of all? Why are you telling me what I need? <laughs> Second of all, it's not true. I don't need. So where does that argument go? You have to make a brach on the cookie. No, I don't have to. Yeah, you have to. No, I don't have to. Here, watch. <laughs> I'll eat a cookie without a bracha. I don't have to. Oh, you can eat it without the bracha, but then you're going to get it. <laughs> you're going to go to Gehenna. Today's kids are saying, don't threaten. <laughs> Enough with the threats. It's not that they don't believe in Gehenna. Adults don't believe in Gehenna. <laughs> Kids are saying, so? Don't threaten me. I'm not going to live my life based on threats. I have to do this because I'll suffer. I have to do this because I'll die. I have to do this because you'll hate me. I have to do this, my reputation. Stop already. I can't live my whole life just to avoid death. It's like circular reasoning. You have to live not to die. It is an amazing, scary, cosmic shift. It worked for 5,770 years. And it stopped working. It doesn't work. And it's so, it's so right. You live your whole life not to die? That's that's ridiculous. You live your whole life not to go to Gehenna? And amazingly, the kids today just instinctively feel that. Because we're closer to Mashiach. Yes. That's, That's the idea. But in the transition, this good development is scary, confusing. You don't know what to do with it. What do you mean you're not afraid to die? Why do you keep doing these dangerous, ridiculous things? Like all of a sudden, my biggest threat doesn't work. Mm-hmm. That's, that's shocking. My biggest weapon doesn't shoot. Is there no negativity now? Uh, is like there's only like inspiration. No. There, there is negative, but only if they agree. You can't use it against them. Mm-hmm. It won't push them to where they don't want to go. So if you tell them how precious life is, they will develop a fear of death. But you can't tell them. that you have to base your life on, on, on avoiding death. This is so holy. It's so positive. It is actually the fulfillment of the Gemara statement, you are conceived against your will, born against your will, you live against your will, and you die against your will. Which means, this is not, a, not about you. I can't threaten you. You don't want to live in the first place. Why are you threatening you with? Mm-hmm. So the Gemara statement is not a, a depressing, negative, oh, you're going to suffer, you're born against your will. No, against your will means you don't need it. So if you don't need it, I can't threaten you. Mm-hmm. Let me put it in different words. We all talk about the kavana for which we are created, the purpose, the kavana we're created. We have to make a dira b'tachtonim and all the rest of that. What are we saying? We're telling children, you don't exist because you asked. You don't. You weren't born because you needed to be. You don't live because you have to eat. You are here only for one reason, and that is the purpose or the shlichus that the Ebershter gives you. 
That's my dear Anil Fanecha. Not I'm grateful that I can live it another day. I'm grateful that you give me a neshama, a mission every day. Otherwise, I don't need this. Working with some teens, I hear this a lot. Like, why do I need to live? Like, sincerely asking, what's the point? Really, like, it's scary to hear that. Yes, if if we don't if we don't pick up on the deeper mm-hmm. message, and yes, it is it is very scary because things are going on that are yeah. so they're asking for a mission. That's what you're saying. They're asking to be challenged to to give to the world. So in 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 the dialogue, the unspoken dialogue. We keep telling them, you have to, you need to, you must. They're saying, I don't have to, I don't need to, and I don't must. And we don't know what to answer. Mm -hmm. So we say, no, you do must. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to throw you out. Right. Yet you have to resort to a threat. Mm -hmm. Because you're wrong. You see? The reason we need to have a threat is because what we're saying is wrong. And they are right. You have to make a brach on a cookie? No, you don't. Do you? They used to tell us you're stealing from Hashem. It's that means when we were little, right? You can't have that cookie, it's Hashem's. I mean, that's what, you know. But I don't know, maybe today you have to say it differently. So, so what, what's correct? What's real? You have to keep Shabbos. I have to keep Shabbos. What does it mean? Just, just types the words. I have to. I must. I must? So... You use this example. A kid comes to yeshiva overseas from America. The first day he arrives, goes into the, to the Rosh Hashiva or to the Mashpia, and says, I have to call my mother. The Mashpia says, I have to. Maybe you should rethink that. Simple. I have to call my mother? Really? What should he say? My mother needs me to call her. That's the idea. Uh You say to a kid, your mother needs you to call. Okay. You have to call? (laughs) What do you mean I have to? What does that mean? You need to call your mother. I don't. You can say, you should want to call your mother knowing that she needs to hear from you. Like, then you just say, your mother is waiting for a phone call. You can't eat without a bracha. Why? Because if you eat without a bracha, it's stealing. Okay, so... So call me a Ghana. I mean, what do you want from me? So what should you say? The Abishtad is waiting to hear a bracha from you. That's why he made us eat. So now people say, so? Why should I care if he need? Huh? That's scary. <laughs> But the question comes is based on something. Why should I call my mother because she wants... It's her problem, not mine. I... And you hear that a lot from rebellious teenagers. But you know what it's doing to your mother? It's hurting your father. <sighs> they got their life, I got mine. Nothing, no... See, but that's based on something. 
if the kid lives with the assumption that he has needs and he has to find ways to fulfill those needs because you have to, you have to, you have to then somebody comes along and says, yeah, and your mother has to also okay, she has her needs, I have mine why should I do so the default position is I have needs how can you bother me with somebody else's needs when I'm busy with mine? Then you hear the argument, I should do for my mother what she wants. Oh, she doesn't do for me what I want. It's terrible. So where does the problem begin? You want. That's the beginning of all problems. I need. And when we reinforce that, kid things, he Sorry, needs. You, you're saying that just the language you're using when the kids are little, you need to do this. You're talking that they have so many needs, the, the lingo, the. So. I don't know how you just we think, respond to this. We think that we're introducing better needs than the child's natural needs. You think you need to sleep. No, you really need to get up and go to shore. You think you need to, to have the candy. No, you really need to. But you're talking the same language. So it's just a question of what exactly do I need? But the important thing is I need. So this kid comes to Yeshiva and says, I need to call my mother. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. You were not raised right. Mm -hmm. If your default position is, I need something, I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. A guy comes running into your house, I, I need to put on film. Get lost. Wrong language. What are you saying? What are you talking about? Rabbi Echonon Gordon was the Gabba in 770. So this guy comes up. This guy comes up to him and he says, I, I, I need an Aliyah. He said, whoa, 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 why do you need an Aliyah? He says, my, it's my birthday. He said, oh, you were born? Sit and cry. For this you deserve an Aliyah? For being born? Not that assumption. I need. Knock it off. That's, had this question, uh, this teenager, that's this. Sorry, this teenager is saying, I need a new coat, I need, I need new dresses, I need new shoes, I need winter boots, I need a new suitcase for Shabbaton. If you, won't, if you want me to come to the eye doctor, first give me a cell phone. We planted those seeds. We made their needs important. Now they're demanding payment. <laughs> no, it's not so important. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't, 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 don't switch. Don't switch uh, rules on me here. From, ch from, from infancy, we're telling him, you need, you need, you need. Hashem needs. Hashem needs. Your parents need. So, so somebody else needs from you. This actually happens overnight. It's not from little kids. <clears throat> it's a peer pressure. If we could get this thought clear in our heads, we're halfway home. It's scary. We have no precedent for this. Right. Who, yeah. who, whoever did this. But when the Rebbe says we are the last generation of Golas and the first generation of Geula, you know you're in trouble. It's a new thing. It's yeah. a new phase. First generation. Yeah. So you're not really in Golas? But you're not really in Gula. Good luck. Handle it. <laughs> I heard a class where you were saying to tell a teenager, um, Hashem is, needs Hashem needs your mitzvah. Hashem, can you do something, one thing every day for Hashem? Can you do that? I told this over to somebody, and they were so intrigued, and, and it resonated immediately. 
and it's somebody who you wouldn't expect that, you know. And then they told me, um, I told, can you tell me every day what you did for Hashem? Yeah. So I get a voice note. I was in the pizza shop, and I said, I'm going to make a bracha for Hashem. And I said, Bore uh, name Mashiach. Instead of Bore Mizar, this guy wanted, you know, I'm doing it for Hashem. It's not by accident, you know. But it was so powerful that right away they got it. They, they, they clicked with that idea. <laughs> so it's like, we're, we're the last generation of Golos, that's the parents. And the first generation of Gula, those are the kids. Uh-huh. And we're not talking the same language. Uh-huh. So we have to start... Um, uh, feeding our children a Mashiach de Kedaya. Mm-hmm. What are you going to say to your child when the fear of death goes away? What are you going to say to your child when the fear of punishment goes away? Because they're already thinking that way. Mm-hmm. So what motivation do you have other than self-preservation? This is, this is so mind-boggling. Self-preservation motivates everything. Everybody knows this for all of history. What else is there? Right. Self-preservation. And they don't care about their lives. They, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, really? You think you just threatened me with the biggest threat in the world? Mm, not a threat at all. They're not shocking. So they're more spiritual. The, the, yeah, I don't know if they are, mm-hmm. but but this mm-hmm. this element is definitely Mashiach. Mm-hmm. This is what Chassidus means by Bittl. Bittl doesn't mean call yourself names, make fun of yourself, think of yourself as stupid, unimportant. Not you are unimportant. That's such a bad message. Right. Your life is important not because of you. That's what Bittu means. To others, your life. To Eberstein. And that's why it could be that you're, a, you're, you're talking about everything you think you are. You're a shlomazel, you're not so smart, you're not so nice, you're not so good, you're not so kind. Doesn't matter, you're still important. Because your importance doesn't come from you. Mm-hmm. So on the one hand, it deflates the ego of the guy who has everything. Right. And on the other hand, the guy who has nothing is just as fine. I think most people struggle with depression and feeling like they're nothing today. Anxiety, depression. So, and like, where am I needed? Who, who needs right. me? So part of the widespread depression, which is totally un, unjustified because we have very good lives these days. Right. We're better off than ever. And more depressed than ever? What is this? So the reason is because doing what I need to do doesn't feel right anymore. Mm. Doesn't motivate. So you can't use the threat in the negative and you can't be satisfied Okay, so I have a phone, so I have a coat, so I have boots. So so you would think, I don't understand this kid. I buy him everything. He has everything. Why is he upset? Because having everything means nothing. Is that not Ruchnes? Is, is that not a Lukus? <coughs> but they're asking for these things. Because they're confused. So you have to find them as a parent where they're needed, what they're needed for. That's the job. And make them aware. Siddhis makes you aware of what's going on, not just... That it's real. It's, it's very real. That would inspire them if they felt they were needed. Absolutely. So we have a question here that, you know, parents are brainstorming and looking for 
people who could use their kids, jobs, programs, anything, because they do feel happier when they volunteer. Yes. They, you see it. Yes. For Everybody, sure. I'm, I keep every yes. woman knows if she has to make dinner for herself, boring, uh, somebody needs a meal. Hey, I'll cook up a storm, make a party. Okay. So if I'm hungry, it's... Uh, if you're hungry, it's a party. Shabbos. I told you I need guests for Shabbos that kids have left to do. So the highest ideal, to live for a purpose. It was such a high, difficult madrega to get to. Today, kids are born that way. I don't want to live for myself. I want to live for an ideal. And this is scaring us? This is, this is fantastic. You see kids How not do combine both? We need to combine the Gaila and the Gula. How do we combine both? That's a good question. That's a good question. But it's an ex- you know, it's not intimidating. It's exciting. The challenge. The confusion, the whole thing, it's so exciting. <laughs> when you're living with teens, it's, right, it's a challenge, it's stimulating. Yeah. And from younger, they want to be needed. Eight, Eight. nine years old, yes. they want to do things. Two, yes. three. Two, two, three. three. Wow. Start for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you're thinking, wait a minute. They want to be their self. And you're thinking, wait a minute. I I didn't feel that till I was 14. Yeah, yeah. I have a (laughs) five-year-old. She keeps asking me when I'm going to take her to the Shalom Center to feed the old people on Fridays. Do you believe it? No. Oh, you go there to feed the old (laughs) people? No, I once told her. She keeps asking me, when are we going to go already? So what does it mean that before Mashiach comes, the young will lead the old? daughter will rebel against the mother. Not in a bad way. The daughter will say, why aren't we doing something? Mm-hmm. The mother will say, well, I'm making, I'm making dinner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, That's not the purpose of life. They're ahead of us. So we're, we're, we're trying to, to keep them down, keep them... No. to a teenage girl at the Beis Chana a couple of years ago. Her childhood was a horror story. So much so, I, 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 I thought she's making it up. One thing on top of another with abuse and, and illness and tragedy and mother, father, uncles and like, like a soap opera or something. I, I really, I really suspected that she was. She wasn't. The punchline was that her mother and father divorced. They each went and started their own life, and she didn't fit into either one of them. So she ends up living in the house that they left. Wow by herself. She supports herself by babysitting. Oh my God. She goes to school every day. She babysits for a Lubavitcher couple. She never told them where she lives, what she's doing. So she says, so um, I need to ask you a question to get some advice. I said, you don't need my advice. You're so so strong. She says, I'm strong? No. God gives you the ability to do what you have to do, but I am. I said, do you want to be the Mashpian 770? (laughs) 
Yeah. And I'm mate, she's 16. Wow. On the other hand, talking to another girl who had a terrible childhood, finally somehow made it into a yeshiva in California, a girl's school. Found out that there's a God, and there's a Mashiach. And thrilled, yeah? For two years. At the end of two years, it doesn't change anything. Life is still life, so never mind. God, Mashiach, I don't, I don't know. I just drop out of your shoe. So we sit and talk, and she tells me this whole thing. So I said, so, so what are you going to do? You know, life stinks. Okay. So what are you going to do? She says, when I get older, knowing firsthand how painful, I'll find a way to make things better. Oh. So I said, come on. Don't make things better. For other people? For other people. I said, okay, I'm not going to make things better. Life's things. I mean, I was re repeating back what she had said. She says, come on, it can always get better. Mm -hmm. I said, and you don't believe in Mashiach? Listen to you. You've seen the ugliest, worst side of life, and you're convinced that it can get better. From where? Have you seen it get better? No. Wow. But you're going to make things better. It's amazing. I'm telling you, the, the, these, when, when the teens get on the right track, you you got to step aside. They're way ahead of us. Tell mm -hmm. we shouldn't interfere. So, let's, let's get it down to uh, simple sentences. Children today are not, are not affected and are certainly not inspired by threats. Which is a good thing. It only leaves us looking for a new model of life. So if the threat is not what motivates life, then what does? <clears throat> but still, can I just ask, is it okay to say, you know, I know that this, having unlimited access, let's say, to technology, is bad for you, right? So I'm not going to, no, you it's know. Not. But certain sites, right? Oh. I have to, right, certain aspects. Ac access to technology is not bad. Right. You can't make statements that don't hold up. Uh -huh. you, you don't get away with these things anymore. Uh -huh. So I know that certain aspects can be very dangerous for yeah, you. They also know. So you're, you're putting in the limits, but that's not the focus. Is that what you're... you're yeah. saying? That's not the focus. Absolutely. Focus on getting them to do stuff. Using non-threatening talk. So if kids... It's not just non-threatening. It's inspired. The only reason to wake up in the morning is because you're inspired, not because you're afraid to die. And inspired is more alive than survival instinct. So we're not going down, we're going up. So... kid comes home and says my friend showed me something on the internet what do you say you panic you can't talk to that friend anymore you can't bring, I can't have her over you know, I will never let you have it's a phone a big step that they come home and tell you that already something it's, 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 it's not only not realistic to take away her friend, to take away the phone, to take away, you know, lock her up in her room for her. It's not only not realistic. Wrong message. What did you just tell her? That this is so horrible, this is so terrible, this is... A... It's not. It's not. You just tell her it's a private conversation, not with friends? 
Or is that not? What does that mean? That doesn't work is it right? Is it wrong? Is it good? Is it bad? No, it just means there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time and place to look at pornography? <laughs> What do you say? So what do you say? What do you say? You say your, your friend your friend is that bored, has nothing better to do with her life? Is that not true? Isn't that what you meant to say? But you flew off the head, you know, panicked and oh my god. And the kid is thinking, this is really serious stuff. I gotta check it out again, make sure. <clears throat> Her friend is not living an inspired life. She's not. Doesn't feel. So, so how does this help people get better? And why is your friend so excited that she has to show you this? <laughs> what? So you have to play down the evil, play up the condition, not the other way around. But a girl says, uh, I feel more comfortable in a short skirt. Your sleeves are too long, and I'm hot. What do you say? to agree with what's real and then introduce what's better. You can't make believe it's not real. Because then they just tune you out. You're here. She says, I look better in a short skirt. No! Imagine a mother who dares to say to her daughter, look, look at that girl. That is a really beautiful skirt. She's not her size. <laughs> it's too small on her. Nice skirt. It just look like that. <laughs> Why can't you? What's right is right. What's real is real. And what's better is better. sounds so inspiring, it makes sense, but in the in the moment, what does a mother do? She has to make a decision. Where can she serve her guidance? Really, this, a lot of people are asking that, you know, like... That's what your job is. So even if you go to a professional for help, they're available once That's a why week. we're having these meetings. This has to become public knowledge. That's what she's saying. You, you make an appointment with a professional, with a therapist, once a week you can see them, and but things happen all the time. They're not sending the right message. They're just going by the old model. Of right. You need this, and you must that, and you da da. But it, no. and it's notoriously unsuccessful. Can you safely make a general statement that you cannot? force them to do anything. You can just keep on showing them, telling them. Is that like a general statement you can make? Why would you want to force? Why is that even a good thing to want? So I'm not saying, you know, you just have to admit that you can't force them and it's out of control. No, we're, we've got something better to do. The forcing was never good, even when it worked. And kids today answer to respond to inspiration. We do. It's so true. So the Rebbe summed it up for us, warned us about it, predicted this is going to happen. And the way the Rebbe uh, formulated, Ani lo'inivresi elo l'shamashes kaini. 
That is the ultimate description of today's world. Ani loy nevesi. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be alive. <laughs> it's not about you. So the kids say, why do I have to? That is such a good question. And the answer in the past was? Because you have to. Because it says, it says, I say, the Rebbe said, this one said, that one said. So you have to. Cover yourself. Right. What's the method of changing ourselves? Because I think for the kids, as long as you don't mess them up, they're okay. For ourselves, it's the change that we need to do. You don't have a teenager yet. You're not there. Yep. Your oldest girl is only in eighth grade. Oh, yeah, you have an older girl, I forgot. This is true. It's, it's true of everybody. We all have to. Be supportive. We all have to. Mm-hmm. Hasidus is telling us. You are not here to survive. You're not here to uh, be all you can be. It's not about you. The saying it is not the is not the change that we need. It's the, the feeling it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the internal. But it is becoming so much easier. See, in order to feel that even a little bit, that it's not about me. You had to be an avid. You had to learn a lot of chassidus. You had to daven for hours and really struggle to get this thing through your head. Today, ask a nine-year-old. Are you going to a shabbaton? There's no ego. It's so much easier today because we're closer to Mashiach. The collaboration you see, like businesses collaborating, like not so much competition. The we work, the more inspired question. Um, I don't know if this should be on the audio, but practically, your teenager went to Farbringen. She left. You were told at ten thirty, twelve o'clock. She's not home. She tells you, "Why don't you trust me?" <laughs> so, what do you say? So first of all, why don't you trust her? Answer the question. I mean, also, it's not, it's not a, that's what I tell them. But they keep saying there's a lot of people out and they're going to 770 and it's 12 o'clock at night. And more okay, for that's reassuring. They're more for bringing, but they don't, you know, it bothers them if you ask them where they are. They want their privacy. Like They want, they want to feel grown up. Right. So before you say, where are you? Say, how's the Fabrini going? What's inspiring? And then say, and by the way, I, I worry when you walk home alone. They're not gonna, they're not gonna object to that. But where are you gonna get that guidance 12 o'clock at night? <laughs> <laughs> Can have another new story every day. But this, this is this is the the self education that we need to. Yeah. And again, it is not hard. Don't think this is going to take years. No. You just throw the switch. This is technology. We live in the age of technology. Yeah. So we just have to get the message out because. It, it's, it's right there in front of everybody's eyes, right. and, and we're not catching it. Mm-hmm. Once you say it, like you said, once you say it, it's like... Right. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, I could do that. 